And people, here we are going, you know, you know, you know, you know you're a stool, the DJ Belly Movement, you know, we are representing. Colin, Farmer Colin, you don't know, you know, just subscribe to the YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and the rest of social media, them platform. You don't know, DJ Colin, big up yourself. Yeah, man, this is Damien Crawford, politician and farmer. Subscribe to Farmer Cali, the man with the knife. Go and keep this chill. I have to the bush that the end of Farmer Remember, watch Farmer Cali, watch it, subscribe. Amazing stuff. Please watch it, like, subscribe, share. So morning again, morning again, morning again, in case you've just joined us. My name is Elise, and I'm going to be taking you through till 2 in the afternoon on the Bridge 99 FM. And again, we say Happy New Year. First time I'm getting a chance to tell the world Happy New Year. And of course, we trust the process. That's what we have to do. So remember, thanks for joining us on Untangle. And one thing for sure, we want you to remember, come as you are. Good morning, Mr. Brown. Hi, good morning, Miss Kelly. How are you? I am very well, thanks. How are you? I am Oh, not good afternoon. Uh, sorry, <laughs> you're good. Oh, yes, good afternoon. <laughs> yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, before we do anything else or ask you any other question, who is an animal nutritionist and what it is that you do? Well, an animal nutritionist is somebody who provides the best dietary requirements for your animals, no matter what class of animal it is. It could be from a cattle to a dog. Um, what is it that I do? Well, I currently work for Hyper as a nutritionist in the field. So I visit different farms and guide these farmers on how best to feed their animals, which could be from a pasture-based diet and definitely complemented with our concentrate feed. And so does, that's, 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 that's my main activities for the day. Does that include domestic animals or, you know, pets? Well, well, not really. I, I more focus on ruminant nutrition, so I would focus on cattle, sheep, goat, but I kind of extend it across all livestock, so even pigs and chickens. Okay. But my, my specialization is for ruminants. Okay. You know, I, I, I found this very interesting because when I ask this question, it is really based on ignorance. Why are you feeding the animals with all this top quality food? Is it for the animals? Or is it for us who are going to eat the animal? Oh, for one, well, it, 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 it's really a, it's a matter of both. One, if you're a farmer, it's about productivity. So you definitely want the animal to be growing properly, and you want that quality product. And that quality product is as, as we the consumers, what we consume. So nobody wants a, a lamb or a goat that is meat that is tough and cannot be pressured properly. So nutrition can assist in that regard. Okay, all right. And, and, and um, there are people who have livestock, and it's really just, okay, put it this way. Are there people who have livestock, and it's really just for rearing animals and not for, 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 for sale for meat? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, in goat production, you have what you call the, the showcase guys where their main aim is to breed just for genetics and to show how the animal looks when the animal is walking or just the appearance. So you normally see these farmers go to the annual Demby show and they will, you know, showcase the animals to win a prize. Right. I've, I've so that, seen that. that. that yes, yeah, just like dog breeding where, you know, they're looking for the, the, the best quality Shih Tzu or Pomeranian. Um, yes, we do have farmers just strictly for genetics. And it's a very lucrative market. I hear you. And, and for example, you mentioned the goat farmers. Like, for example, those goat farmers who showcase in the rami. You know, it's, they're very proud of that rami because that rami can just look so glorious. That rami is also tough, too. To well, well ye yes, because it's, it's not really for meat purpose. Okay. So it's more about getting that animal in, looking the best. The, an the animal must be round and shine. So... That, that their main focus was to express the genetic that the animal have. So from the color to the size of the legs, um, to the how straight the back is, that is what they're really breeding for and feeding for. Okay, I have a, a qu another question for you. I know you studied in Israel, right, and, and, and all of that. But there, there are young people listening to you here now, and I'm curious, 
what kind of young person, what kind of you decides that this is what they want to do? Probably asking a question about yourself. How did you know that this is what you want to do? Well, well, to be honest, it was, it was more of a, a, a blessing in disguise. Um, I can say both my mom and, and my auntie, Miss Clover Laguerre, was the one who kind of showed me agriculture. They said, this is a career choice you can have. And, you know, I probably didn't like it at first, but when I got into it, I realized how interesting it is. Um, I really have, like, a scientific nature. And agriculture really encompasses all the sciences. So you get, to be, you get to be exposed to all the fields from chemistry, biochemistry, biology, physics. And that kind of let me fell in love with, with agriculture. But I can say that it's also not just a career, but it's also a business opportunity. You know, a lot of, I don't think there's a lot of um, promotion of successful farmers or successful farming services. Because it's not just about, you know, raising animals or, you know, planting some grass. You have services that you can provide to the sector that can make so much money. And that is what I, I learned while in this field for so much years now that it's really a money-making opportunity plus the benefits of looking at nature and that therapeutic feel from, you know, rearing an animal or planting a, planting a product. So it, it really benefits your whole, your whole nature as a person. I want to involve you. in this field. I hear you. And I'm, I agree with you. I think they need to make farming and, and, and all different kinds of farming much more attractive for those coming in. And this is definitely yeah. one area that would excite um, the young because it really is lucrative, right? Yes, it is. All right. So how do you think this information that you have, had, having studied um, veterinary and animal science, how do you think that this information that you have would best serve your average farmer, particularly here in Jamaica? Um, what, what, what I've tried to do is to try to create, create a unique way for farmers to kind of learn best practices. I believe one of the issues that we have in the country is the, the, the a support program for capacity building and technology transfer. And that is really one of my aims. Um, in the field is really to show farmers how to, that we can move from level one to level five just by doing best practices. And I can say I've seen great results just by some of the farmers that I've worked with who, who kind of listen to me. They have seen an increase in their production. So it's more meat or it's more milk or just the overall business aspect to say, boy, you know, they're getting more clientele based on this type of approach, you know, looking at agriculture as a business than just as a hobby. And that is how I believe this, this study kind of helped me. There's, there's a lot of deficiencies we face in Jamaica's farmers. And I think what I learned in Israel is what I, I believe I took what probably the simplest solutions here that is easy for a farmer to adopt to enhance his production. Wonderful. That, that is really how it helps. Wonderful. We're going to talk about your YouTube channel, but let us just ask a question based on what you just said a while ago. Are these farmers, first of all, how, how technologically savvy do these farmers have to be to benefit? And secondly, having benefited, are they using the information to enhance their brand? Well, that's, that's, that's a real good question. A problem that we face is definitely the uptake of that technology. But what I realize that is probably sometimes is our approach. Um, my approach is to try to get at their level and use what they have in their surroundings so they can be innovative. And once they see that, what they, what they design themselves using my little knowledge, they, get, they, like, they like it more. Oh, Mr. Browner, I created this little new feed to feed my animal. Thanks to you, I learned that this and this grass work better. So it has, it, they, they adopt that type, of, that type of method. And to say that if I'm seeing their, if, if it benefits them, yes, it does. Because at the end of the day, I try to ensure that it's related to a dollar value. So before I might be getting $500 per pound, I, using this technique, I can increase my price now because the, it's a more quality product or the, the operational cost that they used to have to set it at $500, allow it so they can get more profit margin. Excellent information. And can I tell you, I can hear the enthusiasm in your voice. I know this is something that you love. So, so you are now Farmer Carl. Yes, Farmer Khalil. <laughs> Okay, uh, who calling you that? The farmers that you visit or the people who you work with? Well, well, farmers who who are, who are visit, they will say, "Hey, farmer Khalil, you know how things going." Um, so it does, you know, I just turn it into that 
into a little brand name to see how it would work out. And because my last name is Brown, you have a lot of Farmer Brown. Yes, out. for real. You know, I could do <laughs> Farmer Brown seems so cliche. <laughs> So. For real, <laughs> if you ever put that on social media, man, it will be like searching for Mr. Chin in a China. But anyway, yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, um, r- remind us of your social media information. How can anyone who wants to get in touch with you, how can they get in touch with you on social media particularly? Um, so, all right, so I'm on Instagram as Pharma Khalil. I'm also on TikTok as Pharma Khalil and on YouTube as Pharma Khalil. I was appointed the chairperson for the, the 4-H Agrofed Council. So it's an 11-member team of young persons, and our aim is to lobby the government to see how to, that we can get more youth involved in agriculture. So and that's, 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 that's on our forefront, um, to change the image, to showcase the business model that works. So they would just see the, not only the monetary benefit, no doubt, but you know, how is it that it can benefit their overall life just getting involved in this type of business? But that's, that's our aim, to really change the image, to show, show them where the money is at. And I think that would help. That would get more young persons involved. I am positive. And for those who are listening and hearing the name Khalil, it's, spell it for us. It's K-H-A-L-I-L. Okay, so, so if you're going on, on social media, that's the Khalil you're asking for, K-H-A. L I L. Wonderful talking with you. And you know, let me just tell you something. Myself and my producer, Vaughn, these are some of the conversations we have off the air. We really want to show people other areas that you can really put your energy in and earn. Because the space yes. that I'm in, everybody want to be a singer and a DJ, and everybody cannot sing. As we found yeah, that's, that's, that's so true. <laughs> you know, so it's very, very good that we have people like you who can show them that there are other avenues that's fun, because it sounds like fun to me, and yes, also lucrative. Thank you so much. No, no problem. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Most welcome. So that's Mr. Khalil Brown, and he is a high pro division animal nutritionist, and his discipline is actually veterinary and animal science, and um, you heard him just untangle what that means and, and, and how relevant it is in today's world, and we really do give thanks for that. So we're going to take a break. we soon come. <laughs> 